Welcome to Galaxy Dungeon. In this video, we'll be analyzing the world design of Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest, also known as Dragon Warrior, is an iconic NES JRPG that started a venerable series. It's a simple fantasy RPG made for the Nintendo Entertainment System rather than home computer. The creator worked for Enix, a video game, anime, and manga company. He wrote and designed a visual novel adventure series inspired by some western adventure games. When he made a version for the Nintendo console, he added dungeon crawl segments, modified the controls, and made a menu-based command system that functioned on the NES. This was inspired by the Wizardry western RPG series. After this, they decided to make a game similar to Western RPGs such as Ultima and Wizardry, using Ultima's world and town design as inspiration for their overworld and first-person combat of Wizardry. Their intentions were to make an RPG game that didn't require the player to have any previous experience with Dungeons & Dragons and make something that's enjoyable to all gamers, not just a certain audience. He organized a team that developed the game under the Chunsoft Development Company. He hired a manga artist responsible for the Dragon Ball manga series to design the game's visuals. Dragon Quest introduced its own high fantasy world where the player would have to explore it in third person. This inspired many other JRPGs which had world maps similar to it. Dragon Quest is set in a region called Alifgard which is part of a larger world explored in Dragon Quest II and is seen again in Dragon Quest III. But how does the world of Dragon Quest stand up today? What makes it so special? The world map is a geographical region that's surrounded by water and is full of hills and ridges. They have bridges to get across certain waterways as the regions of the world are full of mountains blocking them off from each other. Despite the many different regions, there's actually only four separate landmasses. The locations you can explore at the beginning and the first half of the overworld are actually connected by land, but later on there are three separate islands leading to the ending. Unlike most JRPG fantasy worlds, this continent is shaped as a square. Also, while most JRPG world maps have regions with different geography, the landscape of Alifgard is pretty much the same throughout. Grass and forest patches separated by rock and ocean with desert and toxic swamps thrown in. But this game makes up for this in non-linearity. Alifgard is an open world. Most JRPGs require the player to go in a linear path, finding new locations as they play through the storyline. However, like the Ultima open world western RPG series, the player can travel to pretty much the entire continent from the start. It's full of soft locks rather than hard locks. Places the player can't physically get through without a key or plot device. However, some games, like Dragon Quest, have soft locks. Soft locks are places the player can get through, but it will be so difficult they will have to go back and look for alternative routes or complete a quest in other regions first. Soft locks aren't very common in retro games. They're more common in newer games. However, Dragon Warrior did this from the start. This makes the game very intriguing and gives the player some choices. For instance, the player may want to search the many sections of the world beforehand. However, if the player goes too far south, they will be overwhelmed by strong monsters until they die. If they try to get through an underwater pathway that leads to the east side of the map, they may get pretty far but they won't stand a chance against a green dragon set to appear in a spot that keeps the player from rescuing the princess, and some of the monsters in the cave are very tough. Even if you get through, you won't stand a chance against the monsters on the last few islands. However, with enough grinding and a lot of luck, they could make it through. Like pretty much all RPGs, the player has to defeat monsters to gain experience points that make the player more powerful. This makes it an open world, which gives the game a spirit of adventure, a quest. From the very beginning, the player knows that their quest is to take down the evil dragon lord, save the princess, and retrieve an artifact called the Ball of Light. From the start, they can see the dragon lord's castle, which they won't be able to get to until the end of the game. If the player wants to, they can explore the many different dungeons in any order, 
although they may need to complete various other tasks to complete them. Unlike the rest of the series, the player doesn't get access to a boat at any part of the game. So, they have to fully rely on exploration through land. Consequently, to get to the last island, you have to solve a riddle to create a bridge. This is a pretty basic RPG. It has no party members, but it sets up several aspects of the Eastern RPG genre. Exploration, side quests, and strategy needed to beat enemies. Many other game developers took these ideas and ran wild with them. But this makes Dragon Quest to blame for some of the things that people hate about JRPGs. Random encounters, crazy quests need to progress, cryptic hints by townsfolk, repetitive enemy designs, and constant grinding for both money and experience. Despite its simplicity, it has some aspects that some future JRPGs fail to achieve. The player can travel across the entire map very easily, which this works pretty well with the game's style, as the only teleportation spell and item will only get you to the castle at the beginning of the game. Plus, there are cursed items that you shouldn't use, and there's a town guarded by a deadly monster that you won't be able to get past until the end of the game. Use of magic keys to get to secret places and hidden secrets in almost every town. Overall, the first Dragon Warrior's world is pretty well done. Lastly, I'm going to calculate up how big the world of Dragon Quest is. Let's see how far you've really gone on the quest. I wonder how big this world is. Since nobody else on the internet has calculated this up, I'm going to make a reasonable estimate. Towns are tiny on overworld maps. There are 30 steps on each town. Each step is probably around 0.762 meters, and overworlds are zoomed out from towns, as every step on an overworld is actually several minutes of walking. 30 steps in towns is 22.86 meters after assuming that a human step is 0.76 meters. This would make every building very, very small, but this is a video game, so the size of buildings doesn't really matter. Based on these calculations, we can approximate that this is the length of one kilometer. This makes sense on a basis of how far a young adventurer can travel on foot. The width of the entire continent would be three kilometers by three kilometers. This would make sense if Alifgard was just a small island, but most islands this size aren't full of hills and mountains. In fact, if an island was only three kilometers, it would appear more tropical. The series depicts Alifgard as a continent rather than an island. After doing some digging, I found some other information to calculate up how big each step on the overworld is. In the English translation, when talking about coordinates, an old man uses leagues as a unit of measurement. In the United States measuring system, a league is a term for three miles, but it's inconsistent. If this man is telling the truth, then every step on the overworld is three miles. This would mean that Alifgard is 360 miles, or 579 kilometers. That would be the size of 208,570 kilometers squared. This would be larger than most countries if you count inland water bodies. I'm not sure what the developers were thinking, as this overworld is quick to explore, but 579 kilometers is a reasonable size for a small continent. However, this would make the final island, Charlock Island, very big. It would make the island slightly larger than Puerto Rico, which I seriously doubt that. Either way, the player is not a world-traveling hero. He's a young man saving his small, feudal country or island. But since this is a simple game, might as well be a simple, small, open world in a low-stakes adventure. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video analysis of such an important retro game.